Semen retention. Is it a good idea to retain your semen? I'm Dr. Trish Lee, cognitive neuroscientist and sex addiction recovery coach. In this video, we are going to talk about semen retention, what it is, what it isn't, NoFap, the NoFap journey, what that entails, and the benefits of one or the other or just developing healthy sexuality. That is your way to the spice of life. So let's dig in. First of all, what is semen retention? Just to clarify some of these terms. So there is a group of people, actually a very large group of people who want the benefits that a man can get from retaining semen. Now, this is what I want to tell you, what it is and what it isn't. What it is, is not allowing yourself to ejaculate. Now, first of all, let's think about that. Ejaculation is a healthy, biological, physiological process. So is it a good idea to stop yourself from doing something natural? We will get to that in just a minute, but that's what semen retention is. So basically it's you allow yourself to engage in different sexual behaviors. You just don't allow yourself to orgasm. Now, what is NoFap? NoFap is not allowing yourself to masturbate and to consume pornography. And in the NoFap community, which is huge, they actually have different uh, levels of engaging in NoFap. So some people go NoFap monk mode, as they call it, where there's no pornography, no masturbation, and no sex. And then it's on a continuum up to uh, no pornography with limited masturbation. And then there's healthy sexuality, which we're gonna talk about. So let's just think about this for a minute in terms of NoFap. So is it healthy to not consume pornography and not masturbate? Clearly, it's absolutely healthy to not consume pornography. There is a stack, yep, stack of research that shows that there is no good that can come from consuming pornography. And for many people that I work with, it makes them go dark side. I do not want you going dark side. What do I mean by that? It will give you intrusive thoughts that take you away from the real version of yourself. You will think about sex and unhealthy sex, whatever you're consuming. And if you're consuming things that are not good for humanity, those are the thoughts that will be coming into your mind. I work with people who are compelled to go do things they would never do if they weren't watching it and building these neural pathways that lead you towards those behaviors, like cheating on your partner, like engaging in sexual acts that hurt you and harm you or hurt and harm other people. We know that sexual violence is associated with the consumption of pornography. So there's no good that can come from porn. Now let's talk about is there good that can come from masturbation? Well, in a healthy sexual life with a partner, there, you know, this is, this is questionable, but I'm gonna tell you the real deal. If you have a sex life with a healthy partner, then secretive masturbation is not part of that. Having a secret sex life on the side from the one that you have with your partner that your partner knows about, that breaks trust. That in, in the end, it makes you lie or manipulate your partner or hide your behaviors and it creates shame. Most people don't build a, a consistent and frequent masturbation habit without pornography or without fantasy of sexual behaviors or genres or acts that they don't have in their sex life. So masturbation becomes a secret sex life for so many people. So if you have a secret sex life outside of the healthy sex life with your partner, that's not a healthy sex life at all. That's a dichotomy. There's two things going on, which then creates ambivalence in you and creates this inner struggle between the thing that you want to be, the partner that shows up for fun, engaging, raise your freak flag sex with your partner, and the person who's doing things to themselves on the side. Dichotomy, neural pathways that are our healthy neural pathways can't be built when there's this dichotomy. So that's the real deal on masturbation if you have a partner, if it's your secret sex life. Now, there's many young people who, who don't have a partner and they're like, is masturbation healthy for me? No, if you're consuming pornography and if you have a consistent masturbation habit and you're not putting any energy into finding a partner, which is what science shows is going on these days, 
young men are watching porn and masturbating and aren't putting the energy in. They don't care about having sex with a partner because their brains are being taught to masturbate and watch porn. That's what you have going on, not healthy. So would no fap with no masturbation, would you benefit from that? Absolutely. But I'm gonna give you the but, but don't take this but and run with it if you know what I'm talking about, is that in the interim, if you come from a culture or a religion, or if you're able to, big asterisks here, if you're able to, then you can build a healthy masturbation habit. And this is what a healthy ma masturbation habit is. It's scheduled, you stay with the sensations in your body, you don't go to fantasy, and you don't masturbate to de-stress or to offset boredom, mood regulation. You don't use it for mood regulation because at the core of masturbation, that's the problem. Your brain has been trained to use masturbation to make you feel good and to self-soothe. It's like a binky. I don't want men across the world using their masturbation binky to make them feel okay about life. This journey in NoFap and healthy sexuality is about getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. So when uncomfortable feelings set in, don't reach for the binky to soothe yourself. Sit with those feelings and go, what's going on right now? I'm stressed out about work. What's going on right now? My partner left, I've got eight hours and nothing to do. I'm bored. Fill those gaps with something healthy. Figure out how to offset the stress of work and figure out how to fill your time in healthy ways. You know what I watched last night? Drone racing. It was the coolest thing ever. It was a, it was on, my husband had it on TV, but I oh, actually he called me over. He's like, Trish, you got to check this out because he knows I'm into adrenaline rush types of things like that. These dudes were racing drones in Las Vegas through this awesome obstacle course. I'm like, sign my action up. We actually have an awesome drone that my brother-in-law gave us. I'm like, dude, we need to take the drone out and get this thing going. And we might actually have two. I'm gonna totally race my husband in drone racing and I'm gonna let you know how it goes. But do something exhilarating. Even watch drone racing, it was totally cool. Instead of masturbating and watching pornography, it's filling the void. Let's fill that void with drone racing. Okay, so back to what is healthy sexuality. Healthy sexuality certainly isn't not ejaculating. Our bodies were made for sex. So I'm here to tell you, moving towards healthy sexuality with a partner, finding that partner. Yes, you can find that partner. If you're saying, I can't find a partner, that is BS, my friend. Everybody can attract to them the partner that they want. And if you are not attracting that partner, you're blocking that partner. And you're probably blocking that partner with porn and masturbation. So attract your to yourself a partner and then figure out what you like sexually with that partner. Explore different things. Have fun. It should be engaging. It should be connective, oxytocin, where you get connection by being with that partner. And you're ejaculating, but you're not ejaculating all the time as you would with a pornography or a masturbation habit. Or worse, yep, here it comes, we're gonna talk about edging. Or worse, in semen retention, you're able to edge or do whatever sexual behaviors that you're enjoying, you just don't allow yourself to release. So edging for the brain is one of the worst things you can do. You're allowing that dopamine flood to flood your brain and to numb you out, but you're never allowing yourself to reach completion. And what that does is it makes you linger in a pleasure-seeking state. Dopamine is the pleasure-seeking neurochemical. It's not the one of pleasure. Pleasure-seeking makes you go back for more. When you have sex with your partner, it's not only pleasure at lower levels, but it's joy, serotonin, the neurotransmitter of joy and happiness, oxytocin, the neurotransmitter of connection, of love, of healthy lust when you're using it with a partner. That's what I'm talking about, the Kool-Aid. Get that perfect neurochemical cocktail going. Don't just keep looking for more and more dopamine, which is what happens in edging very dangerous for the brain. I work with so many people who are really, really in trouble in terms of memory, anxiety, depression, intrusive thoughts, lack of motivation, bad news. 
So semen retention with edging and no ejaculation, that is probably the most unhealthy thing for you because you're doing two very unnatural things, going back for more and more dopamine and then not ejaculation, ejaculating, which will send you back for more and more dopamine. Okay, so what are the benefits of not consuming pornography and not masturbating, but working towards developing a healthy sexual lifestyle where you have a partner and you're with your partner two times a week, right? Two times a week, that's great. If you need to have sex every single day, that's your binky, my friend. Think about that, binky. You don't want a binky. You're, you're a grown arse man, you don't need a binky. What you need is to look forward to having some sex with your partner. And this is what it will do for you. It will decrease your anxiety. It will decrease depression. It will increase your motivation. It will increase your motivation for life, for your work, for your friends and family, because you want to connect with them now. You got that oxytocin flowing. The shame cycle's broken. There's no need to feel shameful of what you're consuming. You feel jazzed up about going into the world to be with the people there. You're psyched about your hobbies. You buy yourself a drone and you crank it out and you have fun, hopefully not crashing into anything but you are engaged in life. So your motivation goes up, your focus goes up, your erectile dysfunction, delayed ejaculation, premature ejaculation, all of those go down. Those happen because the reward center in the middle of your brain is fried. So if you're frying out the reward center in your brain with a massively arousing, super normal stimulus in the screen, I'm pointing to my computer, you are frying your brain with that super normal stimulus. So what it does is now when you're with your partner, you can't get an erection because you don't have that level of arousal. That's where erectile dysfunction comes from, your brain. Delayed ejaculation comes from the fact that you can't ejaculate without all that fantasy and all that an uh, unreality and distorted reality that you're watching in porn. You have to go there to be able to get aroused enough. If you have earlier premature ejaculation, think about what you're doing. Usually that comes from masturbation, foreplay, or you're going to fantasy in your mind. That's usually where premature ejaculation comes from. You've already built this arousal up probably through edging, possibly through edging, or through some other unhealthy sexual behaviors. But when you develop healthy sexuality two or three times a week, now your brain's looking forward to being with your partner. The dopamine gets dripping in a really healthy way. You're moving towards your partner. It's connecting you to your partner even when you're not having sex. If you don't have a partner and you're thinking about dating and you're going to a party on Friday night, that dopamine's gonna drip knowing that you might meet somebody at the party. But if you masturbate and watch porn, we know it increases social anxiety. So now you're not looking forward to going to the party because your brain's all distorted and it's not looking forward to the potential of who you might meet. So it, you have to stay out of the screen and you should eliminate masturbation. You should eliminate masturbation probably forever, honestly, if you can develop healthy sexuality, but if you have a partner, your masturbation should be disclosed to your partner. So it's no longer your secret sex life. That is the real problem. But if you develop a healthy masturbation habit and your partner knows that you masturbate once every two weeks and it becomes part of your sex life, but it's not a secret, then it can be part of a healthy, healthy sex life. But I would still warn against that better off to include masturbation types of activities in your healthy sex life with your partner. Include your partner and it's no longer something you do by yourself. You can totally get that going. So stay out of the screen. Definitely don't retain semen for too long. It's not natural. And you will find that if you retain it for too long, your body will purge it usually in the night in terms of nocturnal emissions. And that's okay. If that happens in your porn brain rewire journey, that's your body naturally purging because that's part of the process. But I encourage you to get with your honey and repair your relationship if it's if there's any uh, attachment that's been, you know, kind of detached and gone awry. And if you don't have a honey, look forward to the honey that you can attract to yourself when you stay out of the screen. 
Okay, I hope that helps you out. And remember, if you're looking for help on this journey, go on over to drtrishlee.com. My 90-day program has all the tools that you need to succeed in this journey and the support from me and my team. Science shows that's what you need to actually succeed, the right tools and the right support. And we have it for you if you need it. Okay, until next time, control your brain or it'll control you.